Well, it's just gone half past two and I'm heading further down the coast to a place called Netherton. Just hang on. It's just gone half past two and I'm walking along the country lanes now. Uh, quite dangerous at times. Some of these people still want to do 60 mile an hour down these roads. You've got to be really careful. But anyway, I uh, made it quite successfully to St Bees and I've got to say that was one of the most exciting walks I've ever done. Absolutely brilliant. I can really recommend it to anybody. Whitehaven to St Bees. And uh, I stopped and had a cup of tea in St Bees. Met loads of foreigners, a load of Australians and a load of Americans all setting off from St Bees on the way to um, Robin Hood's Bay on the coast to coast walk which is 139 miles. So my plan is to just walk as far as I feel like walking with no destination. I'll just see how it goes because there is a railway track that runs more or less along the beach and I can jump on at any point and go back to the station at Whitehaven where the, the van is parked and that's how it's going to be probably for a day or two but it's still glorious weather there's hardly a breath of wind it's about I would say about maybe 24 25 degrees I bought some more water topped up with water enjoyed my cup of tea and it's great I'm feeling full of beans Stones railway station. Braystones is uh, 18 minutes from here to Whitehaven and uh, I've just learned having looked at the timetable that uh, you need to stop by request it's a bit like putting your hand out on the bus stops but the last train went through here at about 80 miles an hour and uh, I think <laughs> I didn't know quite what was going on but I've learned now the problem is I've got to wait now until I've got over an hour to wait which is a bit distressing but uh, it's a beautiful afternoon I'm looking out at the sea you could see the Isle of Man from here earlier on when the Sun was in the east but it's all hazy now when you can't see it at all but I had a really good day I've really enjoyed it actually um, I really don't know where I got my energy from to, to, to get to this point. Uh, the walk this morning from Whitehaven to St Bees was absolutely stunning. It was absolutely brilliant. And being a bank holiday Monday, St Bees was packed again. And uh, lots and lots of people having a nice day out. But I went for a cup of tea uh, in St Bees itself. Not, not at the beach because the queue was about 25 metres long so I went to a pub instead in St Bees and had a cup of tea there and made the decision to walk on for another couple of hours and I'm glad I did, I feel much better for it um, and uh, I'm just hoping that standing here putting my hand out is actually going to stop this train
Well, it's now 5.30 and the 17.10 that was supposed to stop here hasn't turned up at all. So I've just been onto the kind of telephone that you use when you want to cross the line with a vehicle and spoke to the, I don't know whether it was a fat controller or whatever, actually it was quite a nice young lady who tells me that the next train now is going to be 6.36 which means that I've been sitting here for, by the time the train comes, two and a half hours in the hot sunshine, nowhere to shelter, there's nothing. So I'm a little bit miffed and uh, I'm going to have to think again about using the rail service but I'm going to rely on it and that's the trouble but it just seems to me as if it's, you know, it's, it's like Mickey Mouse stuff. So. I've got some time to kill until the train eventually arrives. I'm still not totally confident. I don't know what I'll do if the, if the next one doesn't come. So I've decided to come and give my feet a nice soak. Well, you saw me earlier in a bit of a jam at a railway station and I ended up in a place called Thornhill and, uh, and started hitchhiking and this gentleman, uh, Duncan, has very kindly given me a lift all the way to Whitehaven station and there you'll see the purple van. So, Duncan, I'd really like to say you're a wonderful guy. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to, to, to meet you and thank you very, very much indeed. I oh, know, thank you. Thank you, you for you, you, entertaining me with telling me what you're doing, actually, and it's my pleasure to help. It really is. You know. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank, thank you indeed. I today I'm wearing a brand new pair of trainers and those are the old trainers. They were identical when I started. This is a result yesterday of walking on the beach. Um, I knew that I was going to be throwing these away today. But you can see how much they've worn at the back. There's hardly any, there's nothing left on the back end. And uh, the, I don't know how many million steps I've taken in these yet, because I'm still calculating the walk in terms of you know how many miles exactly I've done but they've been absolutely brilliant and I bought these from Decathlon in Sheffield I bought three pairs actually that's the second pair and uh, they've been brilliant 10 quid these and they've last they've, they've walked I would suggest on this they've walked close to 450 miles so I'm, I'm very pleased with that but uh, all good things come to an end, they're going in the bin. Well, I'm sorry to say I've got off to a bit of a bad start again this morning. Um, there was a massive police presence as I got off the train. And because I was carrying a video camera in my hand, as I always am, they stopped me and wanted to know who I was and what I was doing, show some ID. I got held up for about half an hour. And after that I set off in the wrong direction. I, I assumed that I'd have to walk around the power station to... Uh, to the sort of town of Sellafield, but there isn't such a thing. 
So having walked about two miles, I've more or less turned round, come back to the station. And now I've met this river, I can, I can cross it, but I want to try and find the coastal path. And um, it's all very difficult this morning. Bit of a bad start, but there's still plenty of the day to go and it's nice and cool on the, on the seafront here. So I'll see if I can make up for lost time. Now here I am on a remote beach just north of Sellafield and this is Laura and Laura's from the States. And what are you doing here then Laura? What's going on? What, riding our bikes. Uh. Just riding your bikes. Yeah. We're going to kind of follow the Hadrian tra uh, Wall Trail. Yes. Roughly. I'm going to go through the lakes area and then join it back up near Pulsewave. Very nice. Very nice. Um, is this your first time in the UK? Yes it is. And where are you from in America? Colorado. Colorado. That's amazing. And are you liking England and all the people yep. and the scenery? What What's the best thing you like about England? Um. Uh, probably riding bikes. Well, yeah, that's where the scenery and that kind of thing. It's nice yeah. scenery, isn't it? Yeah. And the weather. Nice being in a different country. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, is it hot in Colorado as well, then? No. Really? We live at eight thousand feet. Oh wow! Around there. Seven, eight thousand feet low. Well, I mean, this is only a small flat island then compared to that, isn't it, really? Yeah. Well, this is a gentleman sat under his fishing umbrella on the beach. His name is Michael. And um, you live locally, Michael? Well, it's a holiday home we have just up behind us. Yes. Just the other side of the railway. We're from Nottingham. Nottingham? Yeah, ah, so, right. but we come up to Seascale quite often. You're not from Nottingham, though, are no, you? No, I'm from South East London. Yeah. Right, OK. My wife is from Bromley. Oh, yes, not far from where. I was born in Lewisham. Lewisham, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. not far, yeah. I think she said she should go swimming in Lewisham. Yes, it used to be a swimming bus. Yeah, that's Knocked right. Knocked down now. Yeah, is it really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, she'd be interested to know that, yeah. yeah. But, um, so, obviously, you, you, you've got your holiday home. You spend a lot of time on the beach at this time of year. Yes. Is this your first time this year, then? No, we've, we came up earlier, sort of Easter time and sort of before that. Yes. Um, but, yeah, this is the first time we've had any decent weather up here for a while. Yeah, and the, the weather's been incredible. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. OK, well, it's been very nice meeting okay. you. OK. Um, you, can, you can watch the gym's okay, Jim. coastal path. And, yeah, and, have a good time. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, if you get stuck, we're just here. Yeah. <laughs> That's very kind. All right. Right. Now this is Zoe who's from Leamington Spa. Hello. What are you doing here then Zoe? I'm visiting my parents and I was just saying this is the first time I've been on this beach in a vest top and factor 50 because I usually have a big thick coat with a scarf and a hat and the weather is beautiful. Yes. And good luck on your walk, you're doing really really well. Well thank you very much. That's alright. And what about the children, are you enjoying it? Yeah. You like it here you on the beach. You love it on the beach don't you? Do you make more sand castles and digging all day, can't you? Yeah. You'd like to dig, don't you? Because the tide will be going out soon, yeah. so, so you'll, you'll be able to play in the rock pools and things, won't you? That sort of thing. But yeah, well, it's been a pleasure meeting and you, Zoe, you. and uh, best of luck to you in yeah, the future. Good luck. Go and I'll get a cup of tea here with somewhere. Can. There's a, with that cow up there, look, yeah. there's a little cafe there. Oh, Ice right. cream and a cup of tea. Smash it. The hill. Smash it. Thank you very much. lacking in energy today I uh, I'm gonna press on a little bit longer but I think I think yesterday the Sun and everything took it out of me a bit too much now I don't want to do anything stupid and make myself ill so I'm gonna try and uh, get to Raven glass which I'm told is very nice and assuming that they've got uh, a, a, a internet signal and I'll ask one or two of the locals if that's possible I'll bring the van up here and, and move away from Whitehaven I think I'm maybe halfway now between Whitehaven and Barrow in Furness and uh, there's still the train line to, to, to rely on and I mean yesterday was a complete cock up really but today I'm, it's been much better and um, so you know I'll just see, I'll, I'll probably put another two or three hours in uh, and it's walking on the beach which takes your energy away a little bit more. The tide is going out now, so, so it will make it easier because uh, 
that the, there'll be some sort of semi wet dry sand to walk along instead of the soft sand which is much which really does sap your energy I've got my new trainers on today as well and uh, I'm sort of breaking them in gently but they are a lot more comfortable than my old ones and I think uh, you know they served the time they did nearly 500 miles which isn't bad and uh, so I'll I'll press on I've had my tea and I'll press on this very nice fella called Brian who lives locally and he knows the score about what's going on around here in the beach and everything so we're, we're coming up to Ravenglass very soon then Brian yeah what, what, what's what, what about Ravenglass what's that famous Ravenglass is a little uh, used to be a Roman port in, in the old days and uh, even today there is a room old Roman baths there where you can go and see really? and it's also the home of the Eskiel, uh, Eskiel uh, miniature railway which really yeah oh, Ravenglass and Estill miniature railway yes. which is a, a very miniature gauge it's uh, it is made up of an old I know line which used to go up into the Estill valley uh, really? I know yeah uh, and it uh, takes tourists and then everything like seven miles a little jaunt puffs along either really? electric That's... electric type trains yeah uh, or steam steam trains uh, which are uh, don't quote me, I think some of them are a tenth the scale of a normal sized engine. Really? Yeah. And they have been half term now, it'll be being you know weather like this will be used by a lot of people. Yeah. It really is uh, it really is enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's nice. Yeah. Uh, I've got to be honest with you, I was quite impressed with Whitehaven. Yeah. You know, they've made a really nice well, job of the harbour area and, well, and, and tidied it up. That's from where, if you, the founder of the American Navy uh, came into Whitehaven and attacked Whitehaven, John Paul Jones. Right. You heard of him? Uh, so there's a pub called that. He, I yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he came into Whitehaven with a load of Americans to uh, cause mayhem in, in Whitehaven. Right. But he's, the, he's renowned for being the founder of the United States Navy. Wow. So we you know we're very uh, very famous with words with up here and everybody else. So we've got a few right. famous people. When you say John Paul Jones, I wondered if it was if it was, if it was the bass player from Led Zeppelin. <laughs> no, no, no. A bit a bit uh, <laughs> a bit uh, uh, and we do uh, we used to have every two years at a big uh, Madicam festival in, in, in Whitehaven yes. and uh, what, uh, the Americans would pull up in one of their big uh, huge ships yeah? Yeah, yeah. they'd bring a, 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 a crew or a team whatever you like to call them bring them ashore with the American flags and right. everything else and Right. The week and everything, everything right. else to us, you know. And, right. And then we got up. And George Washington's grandmother's buried in Whitehaven. Fancy that. Yeah, uh, St Nicholas Churchyard. That's the, if you, you know, there's the churchyard I in the... I did notice, it's yes. In the, yeah, in the middle yeah. of the town. Yeah. It's been an absolute yeah. pleasure talking to you, and yeah. thank you very much. Enjoy indeed. yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's keep on nice plodding along there, sir. I will, yes. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Don't get sunstroke. Thank you. Bye now.
Well, it's another beautiful morning here in Whitehaven. It's Wednesday the 26th of uh, May now. And uh, having been here in uh, Whitehaven since Saturday, it's time for me to make a move. Uh, my plan to use the railways uh, has been very patchy. Uh, great frustration. I experienced the same yesterday. Um, and I'm having to change my plan actually because it's I'm, I'm moving further and further out uh, on the train further and further south and um, the reason that I've done this as I said earlier is because there's no internet coverage between here and probably 25 miles down the coast even my even my iPhone wouldn't work and uh, I need my iPhone constantly for map references and finding my way around and um, I need to get on a campsite that's got mains electricity I've got washing to do I've, I need a shower <laughs> as an example and uh, I need to find somewhere new and uh, I always knew from the very beginning uh, when I first made this plan to do this walk and checking around the countryside not in very fine detail but the places and I always thought that this this part of Cumbria was going to be a problem and it has been a big problem so today I'm going to drive to Drigg which is where I caught the train last night um, there's a lady that I'd like to speak to who uh, owns the cafe on the station very interesting lady I want to speak to her and I also want to go into Ravenglass which I I could see yesterday across the river but I couldn't get across the river and that was like really frustrating because I, I eventually worked around, I walked around in a, almost a full circle uh, which added probably about, I don't know, five, eight miles onto the walk uh, across more or less a, uh, uh, it's difficult to describe, a mud flat and, uh, and it was quite dangerous because it was very soggy in places and I had to stick to the outer perimeters of this area uh, but it was like really frustrating. I ended up climbing over one or two fences and walking across one or two fields that perhaps I shouldn't have walked across. There's another reason as well, uh, and that is that I need to I need to move for no other reason than to recharge the batteries on the van because I've been using the computers and and the laptop, you know, more or less constantly, and uh, I'm worried that uh, there's not enough power going in, even though I've got the uh, on, on the top I've got the solar panel which which does charge probably about f a four amp charge apparently which is quite good but I'm concerned that uh, not knowing how much power there is in the batteries at the moment that, uh, that the the computer might just sort of crash and uh, I, I, that's the last thing I want so a drive today for about 30 40 miles to Millham um, however I do it is, is going to recharge the batteries and the other thing is I've got a lot of editing to do I haven't started on the editing of the of, of the walk for the last three or four days uh, because I just haven't had the time and um, I need to sit for a day and, and have a rest um, and do some editing and that will tie in nicely that the weather forecast is about to change today and, and rain is due this afternoon so I think just a light day today for me would would be perfect with not too much walking but things can change let's just see what happens
is Trevor, who's the engine driver. So how long have you been doing this then, Trevor? 45 years. Do you think you'll like it? Oh well, yes, I think I've got used to it by now, very much so. It's a fabulous piece of kit, isn't it? Thank you. Um, how old is this locomotive? Built in 1976 in our own workshop at Ravenclass. Wow, that's amazing. So, was you have, have you always been connected with the railways or...? You know? Yeah, well, I mean, I started my career on, on, on this railway in 1973. Yes. Uh, and I've covered probably most jobs in that time. Yes. And I was a volunteer before then for probably five years before that from a little lad. Right. No, it's excellent, isn't it? It's Thank you. Yeah, but very yeah. well attended as well. Yeah, Lots of people yeah. so early in well, the season. Well, it's a good bank holiday this year. Well, with yeah. The weather shine, it's shining, yeah. And half yeah. term with the kids as yeah, well. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Every so, day. no, it's perfect. Well, yeah. very nice to meet you. Thank Not you. at Thank all. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Cheers Thank now. You. Bye-bye. Carolyn, who is the guard. So, Carolyn, how long have you been a guard on the railway? About two years now. Are you enjoying it? Very much so. Yes. Volunteer guard, you should say. It's uh, is the, the whole thing's run by volunteers, is it? Sorry? So is the whole railway run by volunteers? No, it's, we've got about 20 staff. Yes. And the rest are volunteers. Most of the guards are volunteers. Uh, some of the track workers are volunteers. Yes. yes. The, the all the drivers are staff. Yes. And so how long has this railway been running in its current format? Uh, since about 1960, when it was bought by the Preservation Society, yes. having been uh, closed down when the quarrying stopped. Right. Uh, so that's what it was originally then? No, originally it was a, a railway for the iron ore mines. Ah, really? Oh, right. that way. Further in, right. Yeah. Oh well, it's been it's been very nice to speak to you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Nice to talk to you, Trevor. Cheers, Trevor.